The knives are a Mako in Rex 121 by Creeley Blades and a Spyderco Mule Team in Maximet. After getting the knife in Rex 121, I wanted to test it. I wanted to see how Rex would stand up and I suspected that it would do better than Maximet in edge retention. Um, I wasn't sure. The general line of thinking was that it would do a little bit better than Maximet. Um, the testing that I did was the same as all the testing that I do. It was on cardboard using about one inch of blade push cutting. Um, normally I would sharpen both knives the same way. Um, but for this, for the initial test, I decided to use the edges that were there, which were different. I mean, this was the edges from the first video I did on Rex 121 and the rant video that I did on Maximet. Uh, with that video on Maximet, it was a fairly simplified sharpening. Uh, three stones, three strops, and I was going from dull to hair whittling. Uh, with Rex 121, I was taking it farther, taking it farther on the strops. But I wanted to see, I wanted to, you know, let's just see what happens. I, I kind of knew that there was going to be more than one test. I had been planning this. I had been saving uh, a considerable amount of cardboard. Um, the same kinds of boxes um, from the same company, kept in the same conditions, uh, waiting for this to come up. So I had a decent amount, a decent amount of stock to deal with. Um, both knives at 30 inclusive, both knives hair whittling sharp, but a little bit of difference in the sharpening. On the initial test, uh, the first test, um, remember I said when I did the initial video on Rex 121, I said that it sharpened funny. It was, it was different. Uh, there was something about it that caught my attention. And that really had to do with apex formation. In the initial test, Maximet outcut Rex 121. Um, Rex 121 cut 1969 inches before it would stop shaving hair, and Maximet cut 2137. Now, of course, that's on the particular kind of cardboard that I was using, conducting the test the way that I was conducting it. Uh, that's a 12 and a half percent difference, and I was surprised at that. It it it's it it didn't seem like it really added up. Now, maybe it did, maybe that, that's what it was, and if that was the case, then that's the case, and maybe that would have to do with heat treat or Rockwell. I mean, I've had the, you know, Gary, Gary knew what the, uh, the Rockwell ratings of the Makos were. I'm not sure on the mule. I know that other testers have had their mules Rockwell, and that's kind of what I go off of, assuming that Spyderco is probably doing them all the same way. But I decided to do a second test after that and see if there was any change. Um, and in fact, in talking to Gary about it, Gary Creeley, who, who made the Mako, uh, the thinness of the edge and the way that he ground it. I mean, Rex 121 is such a difficult steel to deal with because it's so high in carbide. It doesn't even, it doesn't even want to grind. And I really had Gary take this knife very thin. And one of the things that he was... That came up, a concern of his after that initial test was whether or not he overheated the edge. Um, Rex 121 has a very high red hot hardness, so it would lead you to think that it would be fine and that wouldn't really be an issue, but who knows? I mean, there's not enough people using this steel, testing this steel, working with this steel for for there to really be a good a good collection of data on the subject. People have worked with it before, and there's an industry that uses it, but as far as knife making goes and, and what we're doing, um, I mean, there's not even many knife makers who are willing to, to, to take it on. And for obvious reasons, it's expensive, it, it's not tough, it's not a tough steel, it's, it's really uh, a, a specified use, a specified category of steel. Now for me, I mean, Rex 121, you know, if, if you're a steel guy, and a sharpener, and you're into to the high carbide steels, high wear resistant steels. Um, Rex 121 is the stuff of legends. I mean, this you know, 
it's you hear about people like Cliff Stamp talk about it, but it's really it's such a rare thing and nobody wants to work with it and it's you know you can't even find it it's it's or if you do it's extremely expensive so gary taking this on was a, it was a big deal and you, you really got to give him I, I feel like you really got to give him a lot of props for for having the guts to do it and to take it on and to go down that road uh, because of the thinness of the grind and the the result of the first test gary was worried that he had overheated the edge in grinding um, he was really picking up a lot of information as he went on what kind of belts he could use and how he could go about the grinding. Um, there was some there was some difficulties in him making this initial knife, and and, and the first few that he made. Now this is different from the ones with the Kickstarter that he's doing. This was, uh, you know, these were these were different. Uh, he's using a, a different heat treater going forward, and he's using different belts and. He's, he's making adjustments as he goes. But under the idea that the edge was overheated, you would think, I wonder I wonder what happens, I wonder if you get a different result moving forward with subsequent tests. So I wanted to do more and see what happened with it. For the forward tests, you know, the, the, the proceeding tests, uh, I really wanted to simplify the sharpening. I guess... I don't know. I heard one too many people say something about the sharpening being overcomplicated. Maybe there was a, a thread on blade forms about it, and somebody brought it to my attention. So, uh, moving forward for the for the upcoming tests, I went DMT course, uh, worked with the course stone, then moved on to an extra extra fine DMT, worked with that, then a Spiderco ultra fine. After that, I moved on to straps, and I used a uh, four micron uh, diamond emulsion on wood, and then a one micron diamond spray on leather, and that's it. So really, not a complicated sharpening at all, as far as the the number of things that you're using. Now, for the second test, with the idea in mind that the edge could have been overheated, I really spent a lot of time with this knife on the on the coarse DMT plate. Um, I think I did six rotations on it just to see if I could remove enough steel to make a difference. Um, this didn't really make a difference to the final edge as far as a number of rotations on the course. I mean, once you're hitting the course, you're kind of resetting everything. And after that, and you've apexed the knife, you kind of move forward with, with refining the edge. In the second test, uh, the result that I got was a little bit different. Rex 121 cut 2,037 inches, and Maximet cut 2,121 inches. So, in the second test, there was a 4% difference in performance. So we jumped from 12 to 4. It's quite, it's quite a difference. Um, and keep in mind, I mean, this is, this is around 4,000 inches of cardboard cut each test, or a little over that. Um, it's not a small thing. It's a lot of work that goes into it. I mean, even even preparing the cardboard. I mean, I'll, I I cut it to size. I cut it so that each piece is the uh, the same size as the one before it, just to make the math easy at the end. Um, in the first test, I was dealing with sixteen inch pieces and ten and a half inch pieces, and in the second test, I was dealing with ten and a half inch pieces only. But I mean, again, I'm, I'm measuring each piece and, and marking it and cutting it so that the pieces of cardboard are uniform. Um, in talking to Gary after that second test about the results, I said, you know, there's no way I'm not doing a third test. Uh, I want to see if it keeps moving. Um, Gary was open on his podcast about the results thus far saying that Rex 121 was hanging with Maximet, and it absolutely was. So, I mean, right there, it's a win. Quite frankly, I was happy after the first test when the edge didn't crumble. I mean, what you hear about Rex 121 is, can you have a lack of stability? Will the edge even hold up? But I'll tell you what, if other makers are doing it the same way Gary was, and the edge isn't holding up, or the sharpener trying to use the knife that they bought, or using the wrong kind of stones, if the steel is finicky like Maximet can be, then you could have the edge fall apart. And 
it's so rare and so hard to get that nobody would know the difference. I mean, nobody's nobody's really taken it and said, I'm going to push it and push it and push it, at least not publicly, not that I've seen. Maybe it's out there, but I haven't seen it. Um, but in talking with Gary about the results of the first two tests, at one point in the conversation, he said, no, wait a minute. Because, you know, it's another it's another 4,000 inches of cardboard. I've got to, I'm not, I wasn't even sure if I had enough stock for that. Uh, and again, if I bring in a different kind of cardboard, the whole thing changes. The whole thing, you know, the whole test kind of has to reset. Uh, it's got to be consistent between the two knives. So at one point in the conversation, Gary said, no, wait a minute. What was the, the result for Maximet for the first test? And I said, 2137. And he said, what was it for the second, t second test? And I said, 2121. Well, that's a 16 inch difference. I mean, that's really, you're really tight with the maximum results there. Uh, the Rex results were the ones that were changing. And Gary saw that and said, you know, you don't even need to do maximum again. He said that the results are so consistent, you can just leave it out and just do Rex on the cardboard and see if it changes. It, it almost doesn't matter if maximum is right there by its side or not. And he was right. And there's other testers who, who, conduct their tests that way. I mean, here I am doing shootouts, and Gary made the point it wasn't even necessary, not not with those results, not with how close they were. So <clears throat> I wanted to do another test with the Rex, and I was giving time in between tests. I wasn't, wasn't bottling this up in the one night, uh, being overly tired doing it, uh, and I didn't want too much consideration from the results of one to the next. I mean, giving time in between kind of allows me to get it out of my head, get it out of my system almost wanting to make the test blind. When I did the third test with Rex, I sharpened it the same, very simplified. Uh, coarse DMT, moving on to extra, extra fine, uh, ultra fine ceramic from Spyderco, four micron strop on wood, one micron strop on leather. I noticed doing the second test that the edge on Rex was better. It didn't feel as choppy as the first time. When I went to do the third test on Rex, um, the edge was very different. It came up like Maximet comes up for me. I mean, I even noticed it in how it was able to cut the hairs. Before that, it, it, it was only really wanting to whittle them. When I saw that, when I saw the way that it was blowing through the hairs, it really caught my attention. I mean... You know, you can't tell looking at the knife whether or not the edge is overheated. But, I don't know, maybe the stones don't lie. Maybe that's something that I should be paying more attention to in the future. But again, Rex is new territory, I mean, and it's so extreme that, that who knows how it's going to behave until you've gotten it and worked with it for a while. So going into the third test, same cardboard from the same boxes. Uh, that the other tests were. I mean, it wasn't just that it was the same kind of box. It was actually from the same boxes. Uh, these were all the same kind of box. Uh, I think they were from Amazon, and they were they. Amazon marks their boxes with you know an S1 or an S5 or a Q2 or or some kind of marking like that. So I'll build up a number of those boxes so that I've got all the same kind of box, probably made in the same factory, um, and I'll keep them in the same conditions. I mean. You know, if you're keeping them in one room to the next, is the moisture level different? Or is one room dirty? Is one room really clean? Those kinds of questions. Well, I keep them all in the same place. Um, so I really try and streamline it to cut down on, on variables. Um, for the third test, it was 16 inch cuts. Just Rex brought up to hair whittling. The results from the third test was that Rex 121 cut 2,368 inches. So it far out cut Maximet. I mean, it was a 10% a difference there. Uh, if, you, if you average Maximet at 2,130 inches, roughly what you're talking about is a 10% difference. That was more where, well, I didn't know. I, don't, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if they, if they were gonna hang together or if there was gonna be a big difference or a small difference. But I've heard people say uh, five to ten percent difference is what you should expect. So getting that result from Rex, I'm pretty happy with. 
it would be nice to be able to do further testing, but I don't, I don't have the material. I don't have the cardboard to do it. So I have to kind of stop there and, and leave it alone. Um, but it's all very interesting and I'm looking forward to working with Rex more. It seems like a good steel. I question the toughness of it for regular applied use, but I mean, I've gone through 6,000 inches of cardboard now, and I haven't had any issue. I haven't had an edge stability issue. Uh, even in the initial test where you could say, okay, well, the edge was probably overheated. I mean, even at that, it cut close to 2,000 inches of cardboard before it stopped shaving hair, and that was over one inch of blade. So even at that point, it's kind of a win. It may not be to its full potential, but it's still kind of a win. So, interesting stuff, interesting tests. Funny thing, there's almost a pattern in the, in the change. If you look at the percentage difference between the two steels, there's almost a pattern in, in, in how, it's, how it's changing. Um, the third test kind of jumped, but I did think that the whole thing was interesting. And I felt, I felt some obligation to do it. I mean, if you're a tester and you're looking at this kind of stuff and you get a result that doesn't really make sense, I feel like you, instead of just presenting it, you kind of have an obligation to to investigate it and try and figure it out, um, try and see what's going on there. And if I had done more tests and the results stayed the same, then that would have been that. And that's what I would have presented. But when I continued with the tests and the results were changing, um, I knew that I had to investigate it further and, and try and figure it out. But between the way that the steel sharpened the changes in results. Uh, I think that I've at least hit the mark. I know that I've taken it as far as I can, at least with these tests. Maybe future tests, you know, we'll see. But interesting stuff. Really nice model. I'm really happy with it.